Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. We are a bit behind, so to speak, on Q&A episodes and now it's time to play catch up. We've got a total of three of them right in a row before we get on to any of the other episodes, so we're going to jump right to that. I want to just mention and give a shout out to a couple people, as we always do on the Q&A episodes, as we promised them. Michael D, Chris B, Sean, John, and of course other people who donate. Um, they contribute directly to the show's um, monthly budget through Patreon. I would love to have you as a monthly contributor. Even a dollar or two goes a long way. Patreon.com slash Smarter Home Life. I'll talk about that more at the end of the show. But what is this one going to be about? Obviously you read the title. Uh, it is our lighting Q&A. We didn't have that much um, content uh, in terms of comments uh, and emails come in over the summer. We, we took a break ourselves in August. Um, so really, I just have one topic to speak of. Um, and uh, we, we haven't forgotten about the LED lighting thing. It's going to come back um, as, we, as we get farther into September, but we had to take care of a few other <laughs> home automation things. Um, so we're just kind of balancing out the show. So bad LED light bulbs or spot bulbs or flood bulbs or whatever you want to call them. That's the, the topic of the day because for whatever reason, there were just a number of comments that came in on some older videos, kind of almost all in a row, and they were all talking about dead bulbs and people being very unhappy with the bulbs or even unhappy with the reviews here. We'll talk about more of that at the end of the show. Um, and anyways, uh, there have been these comments and emails that have been around uh, previously, you know, months ago. Um, but recently, just there was a whole bunch of them, so I thought I would I would address it directly. And let me say this specifically right now at the beginning: I am not apologizing for manufacturers. That is not the they don't pay me to say, oh well, just speak really well about our products, right? That's not really the way it works. I put products that I think are great on the show, whether those products are given to us for free by the manufacturers um, or whether I have to go out and spend the show's production budget on those products. So bad bulbs, as in like broken bulbs, okay, glass, you know, that's, you know, pretty much standard. We broke this one on purpose. Uh, this is one of the original generations of the, I'll put the label out there, the Cree bulb. Can you see it right there? There we go. Um, that's the guts of it, right? So people have complained, and this one actually still works, even though we broke it, but you know, we broke the glass, not the guts of it. Um, two different kinds of light bulbs, right? Original, <laughs> new and improved. Original light bulb, much on a technical basis, kind of easier to manufacture. You've got the glass, you've got metal components. Um, Someone's probably gonna complain to me about this, uh, but no, this is this is actually a real one. This is not one of those fake, uh, fake ones. This has a real filament in it. So you take the the oxygen out, you fill the the glass globe with gas. You've got a filament. You've got wiring. That's it. No electronics. You've just got the base. Pretty simple. Very light and so forth. LED, on the other hand, is electronics. It's also mass produced. It's a little bit harder to make. Not impossible because obviously they're doing it. But let's just say this, that between both of these guys, these are commodity items, right? They are, companies are trying to produce these things as cheaply as possible while maintaining quality to some extent. But by the time they get through that whole build process and then on the boat and then to, your, to the distribution center, to your local store, and then to you, there's a chance, of course, you're going to wind up with a bad one. There's a chance down the road, having a good one, that you're still going to wind up with a bad one. This is the nature of making products in general. Now, some of you have also said, well, I've, I've purchased all Cree bulbs. I've had a few of them go out. I've had the, the glue fail on where uh, the, you know, the, the glass is attached to the bottom of this, um, or on people have complained, you know, the seams on the new ones, the four flow that are like, you know, in the, the halves of the bulb, those are breaking down. Okay, fine. Every manufacturer goes through problems. Every manufacturer deals with these issues of how to make a bulb um, that is going to deal with the heat. Get the heat away from the LEDs. Don't overheat the bulb itself. Don't unglue it. You know, just 
all of these various things that they have to deal with. And the fact of the matter is there are going to be bad bulbs and they're trying to make these things again, like I said, as cheaply as possible with some profit left over so that they can make new ones and do more R and D and make new ones and sell them to people who are watching these videos, going to stores and have them featured on uh, channels like this one. I'm not apologizing, I'm just saying the truth. And it's easy to throw stones at the new industry of LED bulbs because it's like, well, this is, it should be perfect, right? It's LED, it's solid state, it should be perfect. Everything should be perfect. Well, I'm sorry to say that that's not true. Now, you're gonna say, well, Joe, you live in a whole LED place here, like everything is LED. Your whole life is electronics and whatnot and home automation, have you had one of these bulbs fail? Actually, no. But I have some close friends who have, and they simply contacted Cree, because that was the brand, but other manufacturers have warranties that say we will replace the bulb at no cost to you in the warranty period. So I say, go call the manufacturer. It's wonderful to complain um, on my channel here, Smarter Home Life, Lighting Answers, previous, but contact the manufacturer vent your frustration to them they need to hear about it i mean they their marketing and pr also monitors um channels like this one for comments and they try to see what's going on in the you know the the internet sphere but at the end of the day contact them they need to know they need to know what's going on they're going to ask you for uh you know lot numbers and things like that so that they know what happened and they can look and see maybe there was an issue maybe there was a problem anyways i'm not making apologies i'm not saying that any manufacturer specifically has better manufacturing processes than another because as we all know they're probably really all made overseas or the vast majority of them are made overseas in a plant uh, or in plants that have uh, lower paid workers and that's a topic for a whole other sh show or a whole other channel. You're gonna wind up with some bad bulbs and I'm sorry for that. Take advantage of the warranties while they're still out there for these LED bulbs in this new indus industry um, because I don't know if warranties on LED bulbs are gonna be a thing say five years from now. We're gonna be in a totally different market for lighting technology within the next five years I think. Um, we'll see a lot of development in OLED and other uh, forms of uh, light in addition to LED. We'll probably be in a hybrid market, but we'll see a lot of new technologies develop. So that's all I want to say on that. I'm sorry that you haven't had bulbs um, go out. Uh, I haven't, sorry to say that you have had bulbs go out. I've had friends that happened to. Uh, it hasn't happened to me. I'm assuming it will at some point. I'm actually almost hoping it will so I can actually say, yes, I had this bulb for X, X amount of time and, and then it failed and, and it shouldn't have. So anyways, uh, that's a topic for another show. But speaking of the show, speaking of our um, people, that's the end of the episode, not the end of uh, the, it's the end of the, ep the content of the episode. Michael D, Patrick B, Patrick M, Richard, Christian, John, Sean, and Jim, all Patreon supporters. I mention this because it gets more important as time goes on uh, to close the gap uh, between the revenue that is generated for the show's budget by the ads that you see on YouTube. And some of you just wanna see free content on YouTube, and that's totally fine. But if the show, if myself producing these shows and the content that I'm going to continue to produce in the future on these topics is important to you and you feel like this is something worthwhile, worth a dollar a month, two dollars a month, whatever. I would love you to become a supporter directly on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Smarter Home Life. You can contribute a buck a month. You can cancel it. You can do whatever, you can slice it and dice it, whatever. It helps the show, show's production budget, which is part of how I make a living. People probably don't understand that, that I this is actually a good portion of how I make a living. And these Q&A episodes, I get to actually talk up these points. Anyhow, that's it for that. Would love you to do that. Otherwise, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Tell your friends, share it on social media. Um, we do these Q&As every month, uh, normally if I don't miss a month or two and uh, they cover the previous month. Emails, questions at smarterhomelife.com or I can find you in the comments as well or the YouTube messaging system some way, I'll find it. 
and I'll get back to you. That is it for this episode. We'll have the home automation episodes coming up next and then some more cool stuff coming up after that. I'm Joe Dekancic for Smarter Home Life. Thanks for watching. See you next time.